Good morning. I'm. <laughs> thanks for having me. I'm Sarah Wright. Um, I'm director of support services at ResMed. I'm based in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, and I'm really excited that the conference is here in San Diego. Obviously, because your weather is way better. So, <laughs> great location, Joe. Um, I'm really excited to be here to talk to you about something that, throughout my 20 years in support operations, I've started to notice that we often underutilize or undervalue what people are saying when they're calling into our companies. And so it could be patients, and it could also be different um, home medical equipment providers, um, clinicians who need our support. And so when I came to ResMed, I started to notice that there were trends that were emerging after releases. Um, in some cases, uh, it would be as a result of a process change. And who wanted to see this information? How could it be helpful? How could we learn from it? How do we aggregate it and then really start to turn around this information into actionable insights for our customers and really build that trusted partnership? So uh, really what I'm talking about is customer support and how that data is collected, where it's sent, and what we do with it. And so we use Salesforce.com as our CRM, our ticketing platform, and it's also our sales tool. So a ton of really great information stored there that really when you start to bring it all together, it can tell quite the story. So what we've started to do is we started to knock on product development and management teams and start to say, wait a second, everyone, this is not just a one and done. This is not just a siloed experience. This is something that if we start to look at trends and patterns, it's really telling us something important. And so we've started to look at how we collect information, how we can optimize the collection of that information. Because probably you've heard garbage in, garbage out. If you're not collecting the right information and you're not storing it in a way that makes it easy to pull, then why bother? You don't want to be looking for a needle in a haystack. You want these insights bubbling to the surface and telling you what you need to focus on. So this is a slide, and, and really the, the point of this slide is that we have customer success. So I oversee support services, so our contact centers, uh, our solutions delivery, our customer success management team, and our education services team. I have a team of about 120 people, uh, San Diego, Denver, and Halifax. This slide is the power of taking Salesforce data and plugging it into Gainsight, our success platform. Customer success typically have conversations about platform adoption, the health of utilization of the different software and platforms that our customers are adopting, and really trying to drive more and more adoption. That's, that's their conversation. It's uh, very it, it tends to be very proactive, in some cases reactive. But we started to notice that some of our top 10 customers either were very healthy in how they were utilizing our products and services, and they believed they were running a great operation. However, their patients were telling us a different story. My contact center is focused on medical resupply. So what that is, is for people on obstructive sleep apnea therapy, they require masks, tubing, and other equipment sent to them at a particular frequency as directed by the manufacturer of their device. Insurance is complex and plays a role in that. So there's many rules that have to sort of filter into how this platform works. But we sell a platform to equipment providers to take away the pain of having to be at a storefront and sell masks when really you'd rather clinicians focused on sleep tests, on diagnosis, um, and really, you know, uh, oxygen, uh, ventilation, things that really kind of drive that value add. Having a clinician sell a mask is really underutilizing a costly resource. In this case, we saw one of our largest customers had a massive issue with order status checks. That means a patient has agreed to use our resupply service, our platform, and for some reason or another, the patient hangs up happy and then never gets their order. And so the idea is we don't actually fulfill orders. That's the functionality of our partner, our customer. We take the order. We create the platform by which you can capture that order, and we provide the contact center that offers that intervention should the patient need some help. When we saw a massive number of calls and order status, it changed the conversation with success from, hey, it looks like you're using our platform, to what can we do to help you with fulfillment? Because if you can't fulfill orders, it's a terrible patient experience. 
In many cases, it affects a patient being able to get their full insurance benefit because they may have now kicked into a new resupply cycle. And what really matters to those customers is you've actually impacted your revenue in a negative way. You can't, you've, you've likely lost the potential to collect revenue on a full resupply cycle if this is continuing month over month over month. Then we had a captive audience. When we started to show the bottom line revenue impact of not fulfilling orders, we became even further trusted partners by saying, can we help you with your workflows? Do you need help with fulfillment? Do you need some guidance on best practices that we've seen from other customers? Because if your patients aren't getting your orders, your patients are very dissatisfied. And why would they continue to resupply? And it can affect their interest in continuing with their therapy. Internally, as part of IVR outreach or integrated voice response, we have a platform that has a, it's essentially a call out, Faith is her name, and she says, hello, it's time to get your supplies. It's really important that our customers set an expectation with their patients that this is not a, you know, a hoax or any kind of a problem. People are very uh, untrusting of phone <laughs> calls these days, lots of scams out there. So we provide a, a, a voice sample to say this is what it'll sound like, this is what you're going to experience. You just need to validate a few de detailed information such as date of birth and your order will go out to you. In this case, the trend line um, of service level has a really interesting impact from the number of IVR outreach attempts we make. And so we had a massive disconnect between product development and the folks that own the IVR outreach platform and the contact center that takes the input of those calls. As you saw, multiple attempts at outreach for these uh, medical supplies, as it increased where we have an anomaly, it directly decreases service level delivered. And so what that means is if a patient needs our help and they want to order and they come through to our contact centers and they can't get through, they may abandon their desire to make that order. And so what we started to do was meet with product development, meet with the people who are pushing these different protocols out and say, how do we separate them? Because ultimately, by making sure that we have the right capacity and staffing in place at the intervals you want to make this outreach happen, we can drive a far more positive customer experience by aligning the two. We aim to deliver an 80% service level. And so that is 80% of any interactions coming into the contact center out of the IVR in 90 seconds or less. And the only time in the past 12 months we did not deliver on that, it was around a 78% service level when we saw a massive um, IVR outreach uh, increase. And it really triggered another one of those discussions. So again, having multiple teams understanding how their work impacts or negatively impacts the customer experience can directly bring teams together but also drive the most positive customer experience. I also have another line that, that can trend over this called abandon. And if you have people waiting too long, they just hang out. They don't care. They don't want to do this anymore. So you can also see as our service level decreases and weights go up, our abandon rate goes up. And again, directly impacts revenue from our customers. So, you know, the final piece is, I know some people believe very strongly in voice of customer and others don't. Some people say, oh, I know we have room for improvement. I don't really want to know what people think because what if it's brutal? It's great to know when it's brutal. It's good validation. The worst thing that happens is nobody responds. If nobody responds, you have a real problem because it, it, it may be that there's no engagement. People may have just really abandoned and given up. If people are really upset and they share that feedback, they're still engaged. And if you take that feedback, and you do something meaningful with it, and you engage with the person who's taking the time to share with you what they truly think about your products and services, they can turn around, and they can be one of your most engaged and, and most satisfied customers. And they may even be willing to join panels to come and talk as, as trusted partners. They may be willing to tell their colleagues how they were really unsatisfied, and now they're extremely satisfied because you faced head on a challenge that they just thought wouldn't be addressed, wouldn't be engaged with. So we dove into um, doing a voice of customer survey through a tool called Gainsight. Gainsight is a success platform. It plugs nicely into Salesforce. We reached out to our home medical equipment providers to say, how are we doing? And we were doing okay. In 2017, 
uh, we had a net promoter score of 62. And that is that um, other responders, uh, these folks were willing to recommend our products or services to their friends or family. It's very specific wording from a net promoter score. And we fell below the benchmark of 10% response rate. And we thought, what are we doing wrong? Why doesn't anyone want to fill out our survey? I know people have more to do in life than fill out surveys. So we started to think, what can we do to be creative? How do we take action on this? And how do we engage more customers? So we put in uh, a few action plans. We looked at how do we drive Gainsight adoption across all of our teams that have that customer interface. We started to look at what is survey fatigue. We don't want to put out too many surveys because customers stop responding. There's a lot of people talking about the fact that the right frequency is six months, maybe 12 months for a survey. We engage with our customer insights team, our marketing team, to get some feedback on what really makes sense. And how do we ensure that ResMed is not over-surveying customers? Do we cross-pollinate? Do we communicate? Do we let people know that we've just sent a survey, so please don't send another survey for three to six months? And now we're thinking about Perhaps if a customer responds, do we then offer them the opportunity, since they've responded and engaged, to fill out another survey? Maybe it's a different topic. But really testing the waters first and not just continuing to send surveys out looking for a response. We've also focused on different programs. And we came up with a really interesting idea for this recent survey that we just completed in August 2018. So. Research said if we offered a small incentive or chance to win, it would increase the response rate. And it sure did. So our net promoter score went up. I don't think that's because of the gift card. Uh, <laughs> uh, really, it's that our products, services, our solutions consulting, our success management is becoming more and more streamlined. We're leveraging the tools and technology we've invested in to deliver a positive experience that's driven by data. We offer executive summaries that are guided by triggers and calls to action to show us where we need to course correct a customer's experience. And we've started to really drive internal product training, internal services training, to ensure that when someone says, hey, but my device does this, or my mask is causing a mark on my face, or my nose is really dry in the morning, any of these types of questions or concerns or comments, we've really started to drive the creation of playbooks that are validated internally, that can be utilized and sent to customers to drive that outcome. Our response rate in this case was 30%. So we not only uh, took an improvement into the uh, industry benchmark, but we actually uh, you know, did, a, did a fantastic job. And what was really, ha really a positive indicator for us in all of the change we've done over the last year is that 87.6% um, of our customers felt that their interaction with us is effortless. You may hear of customer effort score as being an indicator that people look at. Customer effort score is around how hard is it for you to work with us on things? If you have a problem, did you have to troubleshoot it for multiple hours, wait on hold, talk to us once, call back, check the status of your ticket? You may have actually resolved the issue, but if you had to put in four hours of your time and three phone calls, it's resolved, but you're not happy. It should have been easy. And that's another key indicator um, that we've started to really pay attention to. What we've started to do and what we're in the process of doing is taking these insights and now benchmark against the contact center. So we're saying, hey, what are our patients saying? The feedback that you saw on the last slide is our home medical equipment providers, how happy they are. They interface directly with success managers. When we started to look at these results, what's very interesting is the feedback they're giving us in some cases is regarding the order flow and what it was like to talk to someone about that order. But more often than not, the information being shared with us is feedback on the health of that patient and their home medical equipment provider's relationship. And so this is now being fed back into success to say, wait a second, we're seeing trends. If you have patients calling our support center because we answer the phone and when they call their branch, no one answers, that's a problem. When they call us and they say, you know what, I'm so frustrated. Every time I order something different, they mix the order up. 
My order doesn't come. I'm really getting frustrated. I'm looking somewhere else. We can start to indicate that there's potentially a churn risk before a patient leaves. And so we're aggregating this feedback, feeding it back into our success teams and ensuring that they can put it into that customer conversation. It shows that we're not just delivering the adoption rates, the platform use, your typical success conversation. Instead, that we want for them to be successful, that we want for our customers to drive maximum revenue potential, and that we want to be a partner. We don't just want to be someone whom they buy equipment from. So my last slide um, that I want to end with is the fact that don't underestimate the power of data collected at any input within the, the company that you work for. Oftentimes people think that the data that comes into a support center, to a success manager, to a solutions consultant, to a salesperson is siloed and a one-time experience. Oftentimes there's a story if you stitch all of those instances together and then take those learnings and broadly share them across your company. It can inform how we market products. It should inform how we prioritize feature enhancements. And it should also be a call to action internally when we see a release and it drives up the calls to support, it drives down satisfaction, we need to take action. And if you put out a net promoter score survey and it's bad, it's a starting point. Don't see it as a failure. Engage with your detractors. Have, have that conversation. You'll be shocked. Of our detractors, we always engage with them. Since this is new for us, we also engage with our neutrals just this time. But our detractors will always be a call to action for us because we want to see what we can do to really change that conversation and ensure that they feel like a satisfied customer. Thank you.